My name is Leon Bradford. I'm the Insectarium Manager at the Museum of Life and Science. I'm Annie Spikes. I'm the Entomology Specialist at the Museum of Life and Science in Durham, North Carolina. Insects are, and invertebrates are the smallest creatures on our planet, but they number far greater than anything else. So um, they're everywhere and getting people more comfortable with them and curious about them and knowing about them is what we're about. I think for me, it's been the roaches. Um, <laughs> They're survivors. I mean, they can take a lot of punches from nature and they just come right back. The dinosaurs are in museums and then the skeletal form and it's in the roaches are still here. Mm, it's to give you, a, give you a, an idea of how tough they are and how long they've been around. This is Caesar. He's an emperor scorpion from West Africa. He's about eight years old. He's one of the most docile animals we have. And the thing with scorpions, is that usually the bigger they are, the less powerful their sting is. Um, whenever they eat, they'll grab their food with their pinchers and just crush it. I have never seen him uh, really raise up his stinger. I will say, of course, it takes an experienced scorpion handler to show another one. So uh, Leon would show me that you um, quickly pick it up by the um, top of its tail, so right behind the stinger, and then you just quickly put it on your hand. It took me about a month to get work up the courage to actually pick him up by his tail. Let's bring this guy out too. Uh, this is a giant black rhino beetle from Malaysia. So yeah, this is a relatively uh, large male. You can see the horns. That's why we call it a rhino beetle. It gets relatively large and uh, way bigger than the female. Females, they, don't, they only get about maybe two-thirds the size of the male. They're designed to, to scratch and uh, pinch. Right here, I call that the toenail clipper. So you don't want to put your finger or another beetle's leg in between it because they'll just clip it off. And the animal's basically does, designed for fighting, too. I mean, it's, it's got horns and claws. F fighting other males yeah, over, fighting other over males. females. Yeah. So where, where uh, mm -hmm. male birds might have really bright plumage to, yeah. uh, to attract females, these guys um, develop really large horns to just wow, compete with each other to fight over females. And very strong. We used to put these guys on display, but you can't put two of, the, two of them together because they'll, <laughs> they'll probably fight each other all day. It's a lot of pushing, shoving. This is Rosia. She's a Chilean rose hair tarantula. You might be able to see she's got a little bit of pink on her thorax. This is a very docile species. They're from South America. And um, they're really easy to work with. She's probably been held by thousands of people. So these guys are more ambush predators. They will put down a web, but it's mainly for um, just sensing the ground around them. So it doesn't actually ensnare their prey, but uh, they do feel the vibrations. And so usually they'll have a burrow with a web on the ground in front of it. And then they'll, when they feel something, they'll run out and catch it. You may notice that she's got what looks like an extra small pair of legs in front. Uh, those are actually called petty palps, and they're used for smelling. So they sort of act like antennas. part of our lives in ways that we don't see and um, just realizing that they're important members of you know planet earth just like us and you know they're just look a lot different.